from the OCI block volume service. In this module, we'll, we'll introduce the block volume service and we'll talk a little bit about some of the, the inherent features. So what is the block volume service? Block volume service lets you store data on block volumes independently and beyond the lifespan of compute instances. And the key thing to highlight here is independently and beyond the lifespan of compute instances. And we'll look into that in greater details. Block volumes, as the name suggests, operates at the raw storage device level and manages data as a set of numbered fixed size blocks using common typical protocols uh, storage protocols, uh, network storage protocols such as iSCSI. Uh, you can create, attach, connect, move volumes uh, as needed to meet, meet your storage and application requirement. Now, why would you use block volume? The first use case is sort of the most important one, and that's for providing persistent and durable storage. As you saw in the previous uh, module, local storage uh, is also sometimes called as ephemeral storage uh, is temporary. It lives and dies with the instance. Uh, and so it's not persistent, it's not durable. So if you want, if you have applications where you want to store the data durably, if you're running, let's say a database or you're running Exchange, SharePoint, these, these applications, VMware, you want that durability. So you would go with uh, block volume. And then there are some other cases like uh, expanding instance storage, instance scaling, etc. But the most important one and the most relevant one why customers would use block volume is for the persistent uh, store. Uh, and, and the durability of the data. Now, there are some characteristics of the block volume you should know. Uh, first is the size. We support anywhere from 50 gigs all the way to uh, volumes which are 32 which can be 32 terabytes in size. That's pretty massive size. Uh, the disk type is, uh, as we said, uh, is NVMe SSD based and the IOPS uh, input output per second, the IOPS uh, performance, uh, it varies. It goes all the way from two uh, IOPS per gig uh, all the way to 75 IOPS per gig uh, and you can see uh, the IOPS per volume we support up to 35,000 IOPS per volume and we'll look into these in, in greater details. Uh, some things um, are, are interesting here you could uh, literally attach 32 volumes per instance which would give you a one petabyte uh, storage space uh, so 32 uh, uh, terabyte per volume into 32 volumes per instance nearly you are re reaching a petabyte of storage that's mind-boggling given the, the amount of storage you can you can use and then you can see uh, some of the things around security data is encrypted at rest you could bring in your own keys otherwise you could use the keys provided by us uh, and um, you can also um, do in transit encryption now there is new thing which we uh, introduced uh, recently uh, which is the performance uh, tiers and there is this characteristic called volume performance unit or VPU so what does that mean? Uh, basically, what we are giving here uh, is uh, uh, different performance levels. Uh, so starting with if you, uh, there are three levels. Uh, so there is a lower lowest cost, there is a balanced uh, tier, and then there is a higher performance tier. So what do these tiers mean? The balanced tier is the default tier you get. If you, if you create a new block uh, volume or a boot volume, you get this uh, balanced tier. Uh, this is what the block volume used to be in the past. You get 60 IOPS per gig, all the way to 25,000 IOPS per volume. You know, maximum IOPS per volume, you get to 25,000. Uh, if you want to go higher than that, uh, it, you probably have big databases you are running. Uh, you want the best pos possible performance. You could go with a higher performance tier. That would give you 75 IOPS per gig, all the way to 35,000 IOPS per volume. And uh, right here, you can see some of the numbers. The maximum IOPS per volume is 35,000. IOPS per gig is 75. If you don't need that kind of performance, you could go with a lower lower cost tier. In this in this tier, uh, you get two IOPS per gig, uh, all the way to 3,000 IOPS per volume. The important things to keep in mind: uh, this tier is not available for boot volumes because, as you can imagine, you are booting up the volumes. You need higher performance, so it, that's why you know we start with balanced but you could always go with a higher performance for boot as well. And then the second thing is there is no separate uh, uh, volume performance unit charge there if you go with the lowest tier. If you go with a balanced or higher performance, you have to buy uh, a specific number of volume performance units. So in case of balanced, you buy 10 VPUs per gig per uh, month. In case of higher performance, you buy 20 VPUs per gig per month. 
All right. So having looked at the block volume elastic performance and the concept of uh, volume performance unit VPUs, let's jump into some of the operations you can perform with uh, block volumes. Uh, as you can see on the screen, and I'll bring up a demo and we'll uh, get into more details there. Uh, you could uh, create, attach a block volume, right? And there are two uh, different uh, ways you could do that. One is by using something called iSCSI and the other one is using uh, this 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 mechanism called para virtualized now para virtualization is a light virtualization technique where the the vm utilizes hypervisor apis to access remote storage directly as if it were a local device iSCSI on the other hand uh, utilizes the internal storage stack in the guest operating system and network hardware virtualization to access block volumes. So uh, in this case, iSCSI case, a hypervisor is not involved in the iSCSI attachment process. So as you can guess, it gives you better performance, uh, but you have to do a little bit more work uh, in order to uh, attach uh, the block volumes uh, to the instance, right? And we'll look into this uh, in more detail as we uh, uh, go into the demo. You could detach and delete uh, block volumes, uh, and that's the, the the, the reason people use block volume is persistent, it's durable. Uh, if you don't need it, you your instance dies, you can still have it, you can still keep your block volume, so you can detach, uh, you can uh, you can atta attach it to another instance, um, and you so on and so forth, right? You can delete and, and, and all that. And we'll again, we'll look into these in, in more details. Now, one thing to keep in mind, today block volume service supports uh, this capability called offline resize. So what do we mean by offline resize? What we mean is if you want to expand an existing volume, uh, you cannot um, just do a dynamic resizing where you go from, let's say, 50 gig to 100 gig. Uh, what you have to do is this thing called offline resize. So you have to detach the volume first if it's attached to an instance, and then you can change the size. So that's one way to do it, right? The other way is you can use um, uh, uh, volume backup, and you could back up to a larger volume, uh, or you could do clone. And again, uh, you could go with a larger volume and you do backup and clone. You are not restricted to do backup and clone uh, as the same size as the original volume. You can actually go uh, higher, right? So again, we'll look into these in subsequent uh, modules. Uh, but just keep in mind uh, offline resize uh, and various mechanisms you can use to change the size of the disks. Now, also keep in mind, you can all only increase the size of your volume. You cannot decrease the size of the volume, which seems logical, uh, but just... Uh, uh, keep that in uh, keep that in mind so with that let me quickly jump to the console and uh, show you a couple of quick uh, demos so right here you can see uh, we have been